Unless you get good at this, you will never make any money in your business. Hey, my name is Alistair Cunningham. I'm a property entrepreneur, property investor from the UK. Now, I am gonna to talk to you today about the number one skill that if you do not master, you will always be broke, your business will never make any money, and that is fact. There is no question about that. Now, before we go any further, make sure you get subscribed. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe, that way you'll never miss an upload. Also, share this video. Let's tell everyone about this. I'm going to talk to you today about the number one skill, the skill that if you do not do this, your business will never generate income. Now, that skill is sales. Now, don't be like normal people and go, ooh, sales, can't do sales. They cringe when they hear that word because it's dirty, because it means generating income, generating profit. But that's why you're here. You're here to make money. You're in business to generate profit. So without sales, then you'll never make any. I'm going to talk to you about a system that I was taught by Russell Leeds. A fantastic system how anybody with no prior sales skills can become a sales master just by implementing this system. You could literally take a member of staff who's got no sales experience, never sold a thing, teach them this, show them this, train them on it, work with them, practice, and they will, they will become a sales dog, a sales master. That is what happens. We've implemented this in our business. Russell implemented this in his previous businesses and he'd done it with great success. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about the winner's sales system. Down the side of the board is the word winner. The first thing, if you don't genuinely believe that your product or your service is the best on the market, then what are you doing? What are you doing? You have to believe, you have to believe that what you offer, what you provide, is the absolute best out there. Nobody else is gonna do it better, nobody else is gonna provide a better product. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to be won over yourself that what you sell is absolutely the best. Russell truly believes this. He is won over on his product and his service. When he was in children's entertainment, he truly believed that the magicians and the entertainers that he provided for children's parties were the best in the country. The absolute best. So when he was selling that service, he had no problem selling it. It makes it natural, makes it second nature. It makes it easy to sell when you truly are won over by your product or service. So number one, make sure you get won over. Number two, don't be the salesperson that goes into a sales call and tries to ram stuff down people's throat because all you'll do is you'll piss them off. That is all that will happen. You'll alienate your client base and they will not want to do business with you. The way to do it is you have to investigate. Do they actually need your product? Are they looking to get your product? Will the, your product help their business or help them? Are they wanting to achieve something that you know that the training you provide will help them get there. Because ultimately, if they don't want your product, all you're doing is you're wasting your time and you're wasting their time. Russell uses an example of a, a, a guy that was selling a clocking machine. Russell had a business where he wanted to monitor how the staff were coming into work, what time they were getting there, also who was in the building for fire safety. So he had um, an appointment, he, he had his PA phone, phone some uh, people that done clocking in machines and he had a sales guy come to his office. The sales guy came in and he went on about all the features and all the, this is amazing, this is the latest machine, it clocks in here, it clocks in there, it monitors your staff, it does fingerprint, it does all of this, it monitors even if you've got contractors on site. But the thing the sales guy forgot to do is he forgot to investigate, he forgot to say, what are you actually looking for? What do you need? It turns out all Russell really wanted was a book, like a signing in book. He didn't really want some fancy 2,000 pound clocking in machine. He just wanted some way of tracking when his staff arrived and when they left. Turns out you could just do that by having a log in and log out book. But my point being is the sales guy spent half an hour, he pissed Russell off and he failed to investigate. So yes, the sales guy was probably won over on his product, but he didn't investigate. And as a result, he alienated Russell, he alienated a sale and he lost the sale. 
Next, if you don't do this, you will never make a sale. At some point, once you are won over, once you've managed to win the client over on your product, your service, after you've investigated what they need and what they want and they actually need or want your product, the next thing you've got to do is you do a no-brainer of an offer. An offer where it is just so irresistible that they would have to be dumb not to take you up on it. A no-brainer of an offer is essential whenever you're doing sales. Add so much value to that offer that it makes it such a, do you know what, I have to do this. Therefore, no-brainer. Negotiating. Now, depending on where you stand with come, when it comes to negotiation, depends how much you're prepared to drop your price. But it may, there may be a stance where you have to negotiate on the price. Now, we typically don't negotiate. The reason being is because we really value our product. However, there is exceptions where we will negotiate. It doesn't mean always dropping your price. It, mean, it could mean adding more value. It might be that the reason they've not gone for your no-brainer of an offer is because you've not added enough value. So perhaps when it comes to negotiation, instead of going down on price, go up on value. Add something extra to the deal. Throw in this, throw in that, but don't go down on price. I never negotiate down on price. Never. I only ever go up on value. Remember that, up on value, never down on price. Eliminate, you're gonna to have to eliminate excuses. Eliminate reasons why they can't do it. Because people will always come up with excuses. People say this all the time. You put the, you, you've won them over, you're won over on your product. You've investigated that they need your product, they want your product, they'll use your product. You've put a no-brainer forward, you've negotiated a mind-numbingly great deal for them, and then they're gonna have questions. They're gonna have excuses why they can't do it or why they won't go forward with a deal. A typical one I get is, oh, I've got to speak to my partner. Now, <laughs> you can do what some people do. I, I, I witnessed a sales guy um, say this to somebody once. Uh, the, the, the person he was trying to sell to said, okay, I need to speak to my wife. And the sales guy said, do you always ask your wife about making decisions or are you not man enough to make them yourself? Like, don't do that because you will alienate the, the client. All you'll do is you'll piss them off and you'll offend them. Don't do that. So the way to handle that is if somebody says to you, okay, I need to go and speak to my wife or my husband, say, okay, that's, no, that's great, completely understandable. So when do you think you'll be able to do that? Shall I call you on Tuesday? So you've had time to have a conversation with them. Shall I give you a call Tuesday, say nine o'clock, and let's see what she says. That way, they're very likely to say, yeah, no problem, give me a call Tuesday. And then you call them Tuesday at nine o'clock when you said. But don't offend them by saying, well, you're not man enough to make a decision. Do you always ask your wife for decisions? Don't do that, because that would just piss them off and alienate them. Next, repeat, start at the top. Go back over it, because if you've got here and they've still not sold, it means you've done something up here wrong. It means you're not truly won over on the product. It means you've not investigated that they actually need the product properly. Because if you've, if you've investigated that they need the service and they need to know what you know and they need your training product or they need your product, and you put a no-brainer forward and you've negotiated by adding more and more value to it, you've eliminated all the excuses but they're still not sold, then you've not investigated properly. Part of the investigation is, can you afford it? Like, because if you've investigated this properly and they, they say, no, I, I, there's no way I can afford this, then you end the conversation there because you're not gonna go anywhere down here, there's no point. My point being is if you go through this system, this is the same system that Russell taught many of his staff in all of his businesses. Hence why they have, they have sales in the millions. Like seriously, they're selling millions and millions of pounds worth of products. And honestly, all come off the back of winner's sales system. Now, my good friend Russell has released a book. Bum, 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 bum. The Entrepreneur's Blueprint by Russell Leeds. Get this book. You need this book. It's on Amazon. Search Amazon, Entrepreneur's Blueprint, Russell Leeds. It is a fantastic book and he goes over this system in detail. I read this book, I loved it. Hope you've enjoyed that, hope you found that useful. Remember last time, marketing, this time, sales. Bring them together, you'll make a fortune. Catch you next time, guys.